Hi, I'm Edscar, and my intro for this video ended up with some crazy flashing lights because my camera decided the auto balance needed to be done frame by frame. Just look at that. It is totally useless, so I'm re-recording my intro here. I recently went to War Games Workshop in sunny Milton Keynes for a bolt action tournament run by the Outriders MK. And whilst I did bring along my good friend Ratman, he didn't take any pictures of his games, so we can't really properly talk about what happened there. What I can do is show off my newly completed British 8th Army and the platoon that I am bringing. Starting with two infantry squads, uh, one of these has many of the freshly painted models including Stanley Hollis. And there he is leading the squad which also has a second submachine gun. The other rifle squad has a light machine gun instead and over here my five long range desert group all with submachine guns and they are on a universal carrier. My small stuff is my officer, my artillery observer with no assistance, I ran out of points for that, a light mortar and my Piat team on a jeep, and my trusty 17 pounder and there's a quad at the back for towing that. I have even more vehicles because my live streamed Sherman is finally completed and my well used old Daimler armoured car at the back. All told, there's a lot of support elements here but only two infantry squads to be supported, and we'll see if that causes any issues as we go through. My first game was a mirror match versus some other Brits. Uh, I guess it must be a training exercise. Paddy Main got into trouble versus an engineer squad with a flamethrower, taking out his universal carrier and entire squad, except for Main himself, who decided taking out the enemy's universal carrier would be the least he could do, uh, before getting stuck in the river. Swearing profusely and waving around his Thompson, he stacked up at least five pins from shooting attacks that hit him but failed to take him out, before finally those engineers got the courage to charge. My vehicles bundled around this graveyard on the other side of the board, showing just how easy it is to miss every single shooting roll that you make, before my Piat gunner legged it past and took out at least some of the enemy armour. On the right, this sneaky squad appeared, but I just about got them pinned and stuck down, mainly from the threat of the 17-pounder, so they didn't achieve much. The central objective had Hollis's mob contesting it, versus the opponent's officer in the final seconds of the glass turn, so it was a draw overall. My second game was Table Quarters versus the Japanese Naval Landing Party, and I was woefully outnumbered in infantry terms. Adds to that the effectiveness of Japanese infantry, I knew I had to stick together, be aggressive and punch through. That, that didn't happen. One enemy infantry squad charged into the ruins at the centre of the board and wiped out the first of my infantry squads, and it wasn't long before their sniper, howitzer and mortar combined efforts to finish off the second as well. I did manage to take out all of their vehicles in short order, so my Piet went hunting donkeys, and missed of course. After clearing out the opponent's officer, my long range desert group came back to the middle and got revenge on that landing party, taking the middle ground. But unfortunately my opponent ended up with just lots of boots in lots of places, and won the game. The final game for me was against the Finns, or as far as my troops are concerned, the trees just started shouting percolate. With opposed objectives in the corners, I split my force to attack one side and counterattack on the other, which turned into a total disaster. My vehicles did not make any dents in my opponent's vehicles, wasting a lot of time and leaving my home objective open for the taking. My Piat gunner bravely charged up the trenches and got this very dramatic shot in exactly 12 inches range and missed. My LRDG did fantastic work in the middle, however, taking out not one but two infantry squads and their howitzer and their officer, certainly the MVP here. Unfortunately, the end of the game saw Hollis's mob getting bogged down and not managing to get to the opponent's objective, and a Finnish scout squad sneaking in from the edge of the board to take mine for a total defeat. All told, I came quite low down the rankings with two losses and one draw, and Paul's Americans did very well to come dead last. He won the Wooden Spoon Prize, which turned out to be the Warlord Special Edition model for this month, and whilst I didn't win any prize specifically, I did get a collection of these Italian sprues. 
Warlord keeps giving out a sprue for free with a big order, and nobody seems to want the Italians except for me, so I'm kind of scooping them all up. I've now got 24 of them, which is plenty for my needs. Even losing the games today, it is fun because Bolt Action is a fun game. And even the game against the Finns, I always had a fighting chance and wrecking up the middle with the long-range desert group. I think there is one important lesson to be learned, however. Two infantry squads just isn't enough for a thousand points. And sure, I had the vets as well, but I think I need a minimum of three solid rifle squads in a thousand point list from now on. Conversely, my list had four options for anti-tank, the Sherman, Daimler, 17-pounder, and the Piat. I could easily drop the, the 17-pounder or shrink the Sherman to a Valentine or something else to get 100 points for another infantry squad. You can have the Daimler over my dead body. Thanks for watching.